okay, recording now. Okay, perfect. So my name is Tahani Kasameni Montiel. I'm Dr. Jennifer Beecham's uh, research coordinator at the Sussex School of Nursing. I'm going to go over the e-consent process in REDCap here at the School of Nursing. Um, I'm by no means an expert, uh, but we've done this for over two years, so just let me know if you guys have any questions. So just the prerequisites and assumptions when using the e-consent in REDCap, uh, you just have to have basic uh, REDCap knowledge. It's not a difficult feature to use, but it does require some uh, general knowledge of REDCap. And you do need an IRB approved research study with approved informed consent when using it. So we're going to go over the consent template feature. You can use the template or you can do it manually. I recommend using the template when is your first time setting it up. So once you go in um, to REDCap, um, it'll tell you to uh, select a new project and you do that with, uh, with any projects. Uh, so you won't have to do anything different this time. So just uh, click on new project. Uh, you fill out the information for that study. And then uh, whenever you get to this point, you'll select use a template. And then it'll give you a bunch of different uh, templates and you can use the e-consent template at the bottom. Then it'll take you to this page and you click online designer. Then it'll give you these three uh, instruments that come with a template. For the purpose of this training, we're going to focus on the consent document right here. So then it'll give you, uh, this is a template that gives you for the consent. Um, you'll be able to edit all the questions depending on your uh, study. You can delete some, edit them, whatever you want to do with them. For the consent itself, you're going to click on the pencil right here. Then it'll take you to this edit field. So for this, you're going to need to click on inside pop-up. Then make sure that the consent is a picture, so it's a JPG um, uh, image. And then make sure that whenever you include the consent, that you're including it uh, separately from all the other pages. So if it's a five-page consent, uh, make sure you separate all five pages. And you'll have to do this whole process the five times. Um, and then make sure it's an inline image. If you're not using the template, what you would do is just click on the descriptive text when you're editing fields, and then you'll select the same thing. Okay, and just make sure whenever you're setting it up that you do add a field for the signature of the patient, of the coordinator, of the physician, whoever needs to be included, just make sure you do add that um, at signature field right there. Then um, if you're using DocuSign, um, which is a new feature that UT Health is using at this point, uh, you can always use DocuSign and then download it, um, upload it to the REDCap here. You don't have to just do it through REDCap. You can use uh, DocuSign if, if you want to. So you just click upload field, a file, and then you can upload the, the, uh, the consent there. Then after you're done setting up the whole, um, so you're done setting this up, you'll go back to the online designer, which is right here. And then with the consent document, you're going to click survey settings. Then here you're going to be able to select yes or no for the allow participants to download a PDF of the responses at the end of the survey. Uh, if you select yes, you have to have a field uh, where the patient can include their email. And then um, you'll have to select that field. So what that does is that when the patient puts their email address there, then REDCap automatically sends them the email of the consent. We at uh, Dr. Beecham's team currently are not doing it this way because we have the coordinators have to sign the consent before it gets sent to the participant. Uh, so we have it as a no here, but it just depends on your own um, studies. And then this is just for you, depending on the study, how you want it set up. Then all the way at the bottom, um, you're going to select this this one right here, which is the consent framework, and it'll give you this pop-up right here. So you'll have to select the field where you, uh, where the patient puts their first name and last name. Um, you can select the e-consent version, 
And then, and you're going to have to do the same process for each version of the consent. So if you get a new consent approved, you're going to have to do this whole thing again, but you just put 1.1 or whatever the consent is. Um, and then um, you can send a confirmation email after the participant uh, submits their consent. You can select yes or no. Um, if you select yes, you'll have to include a little bit of, a, this will show up as an email whenever they receive it. And you can select who it comes from. Um, you'll include a PDF of the complete survey as attachment if you want to. We don't do this because, like I said, we sign it before we send it over to them. But if you do check this box right here, make sure that you encrypt the email because, like I said, it gets sent out as an email to them. Then after you're done and the study has been approved through REDCap, uh, whenever you send this consent to the participants, you just click on survey options and then this will come up and then you can just select like any other um, surveys that sent, get sent out to the participants uh, you just fill it out uh, you can put informed consent it will be a blank informed consent so you don't have to encrypt it um, and then uh, they'll receive a link to the consent and then it'll show up and then whenever they submit you'll be able to see it on your site and that's it it's pretty simple